Hi, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and today let's discuss intumescent lenses. In this video, I'd like to categorically say that I find the intumescent lenses are to be two different variants and they both behave differently. So let's find out. We're all aware that Rex's creation is very challenging in these eyes with intumescent lenses. There is a higher risk of Rex's running away to the periphery and sometimes even having the Argentinian flag sign. Well, do all the intumescent lenses behave the same way? So let's discuss a little bit. See, by definition, intumescent lens, which is swollen, the anterior capsule is extremely tense. And this is not the hypermature Morgagnian cataract. And we're classically describing the swollen white lens where the anterior capsule is extremely convex. In this intumescent lens itself, there are two variants. The one variant is the one which has got this multiple pockets of fluid across. And in combination, we also have some areas or islands of cortex which are swollen. That is, the fluid is imbibed itself in the cortical fibers. The cortex itself is swollen. The second variant is we don't have this liquefied pockets of cortex. We just have the entire cortex swollen and we cannot see any of these fluid pockets. So we don't see any of those islands of swollen cortex and small liquefied fluid pockets. So these two lenses are swollen, but both of them are of different variant. And I believe that they have got certain prognostic significance. Both of these behave differently. The one on the left, which has got multiple fluid pockets, is the one which is less likely to have rexus complications. We are more likely to get a successful rexus. Whereas the later one, the one which does not have fluid pockets and the entire lens is swollen, is the one which is at higher risk of uh, rexus running away. So let me show you in this case. Now we can see multiple pockets of liquefied cortex. There is a large band in the center itself. And these are the areas which leak out initially as soon as we puncture it out. So let us see how this lens behaves. The capsule is stained well. The eye is filled with good dispersive OVD. There's no fear of the chamber shallowing. As soon as I puncture the capsule with the needle, we can see the egress of the liquefied cortex across. Uh, we can see this band of liquefied cortex coming across. And this immediately causes spontaneous decompression. So the capsular bag is relatively decompressed now. The anterior capsule is no longer at stress. So we got enough time for us to go back. I'm going to change it to a forceps and then perform the initial primary rexus. So using a forceps, I'm going to create uh, the initial smaller rexus. I'm going to use a combination of tearing technique and uh, shearing technique depending upon how the capsule is behaving. The moment I feel the capsule is uh, losing control, I resort to the tearing technique and as soon as I feel it's all right, I just resort to the shearing technique. Basically, we're folding the capsule and then tearing it. So the initial 4 millimeter axis could be created, not an issue at all. Then typically, we go ahead and decompress the bag. Uh, this ensures that all the swollen lens cortex, which is actually responsible for the tense anti-capsule, is taken care of. And then the chamber is refilled with OVD. A tangential cut is given with the micro scissors. And the secondary uh, rexus is performed and which is very well controlled and the desired well-centered and appropriately sized rexus can be very well achieved. Now contrary to this case, there is another case which is again an intumescent lens and we don't find any areas of liquefied cortex here. So in the compared to the previous case where we could see those isolated pockets, we don't find anything. Everything is diffusely opaque and uh, diffusely swollen. So the lens cortical fibers themselves are swollen and we don't have any liquefied cortex. Again, the chamber is very well filled with a uh, dispersive OVD to just to ensure that the pressurization is adequate and there is no loss of the entry chamber. So time to perform the rexus. I have punctured the capsule with the forceps itself because I didn't want to lose any time. And I'm just trying to grasp it and use the tearing technique. By that time, the other end is running away and, well, you can note my desperation. I couldn't help it. 
if i go back and analyze uh, probably one thing would, which i would have done differently is ensure that uh, the anti capsule would be much more pressurized should i have used a heavier ovd and maybe make the eye a little bit softer there should not be any positive pressure maybe using an iv mannitol or a digital massage after a block would have helped uh, let's go to another case which is intumescent lens but it doesn't have any pockets of fluid so the entire lens cortex is swollen and i expect a difficult rexus in this eye so the precaution which i've taken in this eye to ensure that the eye is soft i have given preoperative iv mannitol so that shrinks the vitreous and there is less of a positive pressure the one thing which i haven't done is i haven't blocked the eye and the patient is moving his eyes a lot is very anxious and this is not a good way to handle this case see the movements of the eyes the muscles itself can exert positive pressure and that can even contribute to the rexus running away but the good thing which i've done in this is apart from uh, using iv mannitol i've stained the capsule well and i'm using an, a heavy ovd to flatten the capsule well enough so i'm stabilizing the globe with my second instrument just to ensure that the eye is better controlled and i'm going with my forceps I puncture the anterior capsule and we can see there's no fluid which is coming out and I'm trying to keep the capsule flat itself trying to use a combination of tearing and uh, a shearing technique the moment I realize that I've got good control I'll be folding the capsule and the moment I realize that I don't have adequate control the capsule is laid flat and then pulled centripetally so and at this moment the patient suddenly moves his eye and the an irregular rexus is created thankfully but we don't have any loose ends so as i was telling before uh, not blocking this patient was not a good idea so nevertheless we don't have any high risk torn edges which can run away peripherally we have a sort of a rexus which is very much enclosed and now time is to decompress the bag so i'm going to use the bimanual ind system to just debulk the lens by aspirating all the swollen cortex which is both in front of the nucleus and also in the equator and posterior to the nucleus just by tapping around it's important to decompress the bag thoroughly before we attempt the secondary rexus so once the bag is adequately decompressed ovd is placed into the eye again a tangential cut is given with the micro scissors and using uh, the forceps the secondary rexus could be performed quite easily so the moment we have decompressed the bag the rexus becomes a child's play so the take home message from this video is that all your intumescent lenses are not the same the two different variants one which has got this uh, pockets of liquefied cortex which is not very difficult to manage the rexus reproduction is quite accurate on the contrary we have this variant where we don't find these fluid filled pockets of cortex and the entire cortex is swollen off and that's the reason when we puncture there's no spontaneous decompression happening and this is the eye where the capsule can run away to the periphery so in such eyes it is better off to have in a soft eye along with using an heavy ovd so that apart from uh, compressing the capsule from anteriorly having a soft eye decreases the risk of something pushing the convex anterior capsule uh, towards the equator so that was it thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful